protecting the tips of point shoes by darning or embroidering. All you need for this task is cotton, needle, scissors and the shoes. Now the needle I'm using is a curved or upholstery needle and it really makes the job easier. There are a couple of people I know who can darn point shoes with a straight needle and they do it beautifully but I find it almost impossible trying to get that straight needle through the flat platform I can't I can't get the needle up and out so the idea of a curved needle is that as you push it through the fabric it comes up and out easily if you're using a straight needle you will need a thimble I'm not going to use a straight needle as I would be here a very long time I'm going for the curved upholstery needle when you first set about darning point shoes, it's quite nerve wracking. I like to start with this curve around the shape of the platform. But if you're a bit nervous about sewing into the satin, it might be an idea to start with the underneath. And then at least if you do make any mistakes, it'll be hidden. You can see how I've created lines running all the way across the bottom. Don't worry too much about where you finish. Remember, you can always add so if you run a little bit short, it doesn't matter. Let's have a look at how to do it. I've threaded up my needle. And this is with a single thread and no knot at the end. You don't need a knot at all. I've selected some different models of shoes because you can see they look different underneath. That one has um, a sealed pleat. And this one, several pleats. Let's take a look at how to do this one. I begin by bringing the needle straight through the satin, close to the sole. I'm not going to tie a knot in it, just allow it to feed through and stop there. We'll tidy up the ends at a later stage. I'm gonna go through there and make the first stitch so that now holds. Now I start the chain stitch through the loop and it's that loop that creates the chain. To turn back through the satin and come up without a chain ready to go back in the other direction. into the satin and then bring that across in order to come up through the chain. I'm switching to a different style of shoe now. This is a shoe that's made with pleats underneath here. It looks and feels different when you're sewing. In the same way that you didn't make a knot at the beginning of the sewing, you don't need to cast off at the end. As that thread becomes a little bit too short and I'm reaching the end, I'm going to stitch underneath the stitching. Bring the thread up. So watch how it seals that loop. That's finished. And now I'm just going to make another pretend stitch underneath the line of stitching, anywhere. Pull that up. I can go back the other direction and go anywhere I want as long as it's under the stitching. Coming up through here. Now 
no knots and all I need to do is trim that away. The stitches won't come undone because it's buried underneath the rest of the, the pattern. Starting a new thread, the same idea, up through the stitching anywhere you like, quite deep so that it's secure. One little stitch underneath the pattern, and this is quite tough. Off again. Now that you've used the bottom as a kind of practice to get used to the stitch, I want to change and start doing the platform because it's difficult to judge where to end these lines without a shape in place. So it's time now to make the shape of the platform like this. When you look at the shoe, we want to come up and follow that corner, around and down to meet the stitches, to make an outline. Here we go. Now, a word of warning and encouragement. Where the satin is strung against the platform, it's tight and it's difficult to get the needle through. You can see how hard you have to pull to get the needle through that satin. I promise it does get easier. This is the most difficult bit. Where you turn that corner, where the platform starts, it's the tightest part of the fabric. So I'm showing this in real time so you can see how difficult it is. Even as I speed it up, pushing and pulling to get the needle through. Everything else the same, through the loop, pull it to keep it flat. Pull and pull and it's through. A little bit easier over the top, so you work your way across that platform. You can see this bit's easier. But as you reach the corner, it will be strung tight again. See how hard you have to pull. If you made it round the top of the platform, well done. All that remains now is to fill in the space. It doesn't matter what order you go in. Here we've gone across the top, then filled in underneath, and then spiralled across the platform. Now remember, you don't have to use chain stitch. If you prefer blanket stitch or anything else, that's fine. Just as long as it creates coverage. It gets a little bit more tricky as you spiral into the platform. But remember, if you have any gaps, you can always go back and fill them in at a later stage. Here's the finished platform. All the way across the bottom. And the finished shoe.